Hello everyone and welcome to another video on the channel. Today we are going to build an air quality monitoring system and uh, try to measure the impact of uh, printing fumes have in, uh, on the air quality. So to do that we will use a Bosch BME680 sensor module that I got from the F-Robot uh, ESP8266 uh, module and the 0.96 inch OLED display. The BME680 only reports the air quality in uh, just a uh, raw resistance value, so uh, you do need a compatible uh, MCU to calculate the uh, actual air quality, and uh, the options for that are fairly limited, so I went with uh, ESP8266, it's one of the very few MCUs that are that is compatible, even a Raspberry Pi isn't compatible by the way, so if you are planning on doing this, either just follow my guide that will be later in the video, or uh, just uh, look at the list that's provided by the BSEC library by Bosch. Yeah, you will see that there are only very few MCUs that actually work. And I went with the 0.96 inch OLED display because it's cheap and it shows everything I need. So uh, yeah, we, I built this. Again, the guide will be later in the video. So firstly, I did a measurement outside to get an idea of the readings. But before I get to that, uh, there are two things I want to mention first. You can see that the screen is flickering, or rather the scan line is moving. That is just an effect of the camera. Uh, it doesn't aff uh, it doesn't appear like that in real life. So, uh, yeah, you you won't see that if you are building this project. Secondly, the temperature is uh, offset by six, seven, eight ish degrees. Not from ju not just the outside measurements, but the inter inside measurements as well. And uh, that's because of the enclosure that I was using. I updated the enclosure and added some hex ventilation holes and I don't think that's going to happen anymore. I verified this by just removing the cover and then uh, doing some measurements without, uh, without it completely assembled and the temperatures normalized. So uh, yeah, don't take the temperatures uh, as, a, as a representative of the actual temperature wherever I'm measuring this. But uh, it's also not relevant to our measurements. Now, uh, in the same sense, the pressure and the humidity aren't really relevant to what we're measuring either. What you can look for is the indoor air quality index, so IAQ, and the VOCs. Don't look at the carbon dioxide uh, est uh, estimate either, because as I said, that's an estimate, and uh, it's based on the other values it's measuring. The sensor cannot detect carbon dioxide, so yeah, it's not really relevant to what we are looking for, and it's just an estimate that is coming up with anyway. What's relevant is the VOCs, the volatile organic compounds in the air, and the indoor air quality index, the IAQ, which is a metric that's derived from the other values it's measuring, and it's calculated that way. It is not comparable between device to device or uh, even use case to use case, so don't compare my measurements with that to your device. If you want to compare, I guess you can only compare the VOCs. But uh, yeah, you can use it to compare the air quality between different environments that we will go into. And uh, yeah, it, it should also give you an idea about the situation there. So as for the outside measurements, you can see that the air quality is 12.34, which is uh, actually a pretty good measurement, but obviously this is outdoors, it's supposed to be good. And the VOCs are at 0.41, which is also uh, kind of good. Uh, it's not perfect, but I live in Istanbul. The air quality isn't great here, so it's actually pretty good for what it is. So after doing this measurement, I decided to do another measurement near my computer before, before I go into the workshop to get an idea. And you can see that the IAQ rose to about 21.7 and the VOC rose to about 0.48. This is normal, this is obviously indoors versus outdoors, and for a well-ventilated area, I think that's a pretty decent measurement, and we can see that the sensor is working. If you want an idea about what's good and what's bad about these measurements, you can refer to this uh, picture. You can just rewind this in the future as well. For the indoor air quality, anything between 0 and 50 is good, 50 to 100 is okay, 100 to 150 is a little bad, 150 to 200 is bad. 200 to 300 is worse and 300 to 500 is really bad but as I said this is just a calculated value that's not an actual measurement you can also refer to the 
uh, volatile organic compound measurement here that I took from uh, website uh, tcamgroup.com. The other chart is from the BME 680s data sheet. You can see the acceptable VOC levels in the air for human health. And uh, yeah, you can see that anything below point, uh, point 0.3 is uh, low, which is good, but anything between point 0.3 to point 0.5 is still acceptable, which is what we got with the previous measurements. But uh, anything above point 0.5 to 1 is marginal, and anything above 1 is just high, and it doesn't even list anything above 3, so if we get anything above 3, it's really bad according to this. So keep in mind these measurements as we move on to the workshop. So this is the workshop with the uh, with the three D printer running, with the film extractor of the three D printer working and exhausting the air out of the window, and the window open from the top. So this is basically the best case scenario I can have with my current setup in the workshop, and you can see that the indoor air quality dropped down to almost one twenty and uh, we have a bit over two volatile organic compounds which is quite high and as i said this is with the ventilation so let's now move the sensor to the 3d printer's cabinet this is in the 3d printer's cabinet but do you remember that my 3d printer does have an enclosure that's separate so this is kind of like the buffer zone between the 3d printer's internal layer and the outside air so this is not the actual uh, films inside the 3d printer i'm sure that value is much worse but i couldn't find a good place to keep this while the printer is running to measure but uh, yeah this is inside the cabinet and you can see that the indoor air quality is worse at 167 and the vocs are at 430 ppm which again is quite high but this is inside the cabinet not inside the room so i guess it's okay and this is still with the film extractor running and the window open so just for an experiment, I did a room measurement without the film extractor running and the window closed. The temperature rose up slightly compared to the previous room recording, that's because the heater is running inside the room. But other than that, you can also see that the indoor air quality is much worse at uh, 212.78. And you can see that the, vo uh, you can see that the vox are around 8.54, which is quite high. So. Uh, yeah, it's not great in this room without the ventilation. From this you can see that the ventilation does help quite a bit to reduce the uh, stuff in the air, but it's still not enough and every time I go into that room I can smell it and it gives me a quite strong headache. I don't think the health concerns are really that important, but uh, I will get to that still because I'm sure uh, a lot of the people who are watching this video are interested in that as well. But uh, yeah, my primary objective with this, now that I've confirmed this, is to get rid of some of the uh, vox in the air so that I don't get headaches when I go into the room. And for that I'm considering building an air filtration system that's based on carbon filters and HEPA filters. There are a few designs that are being worked on and I think I'm going to do one of them in the future. So uh, yeah, if you're interested in that, uh, definitely subscribe so you don't miss that when I build that thing. It will be one of the War on 2 episodes, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, for now, in this video, we, will, we are just getting the measurements and uh, I will also get to building this. But before that, now for the health part of the video, uh, I'm no expert in this, so don't take my word for it. I'm just uh, saying what I think about the issue, but again, I'm not an expert in this, and if you are concerned, do your own research. But uh, in general, the 3D printing is known for releasing VOCs, and especially with ABS, uh, styrene also gets released to the air, which is known to be a carcinogen, so it can cause cancer, but at the same time, uh, it's, I don't think it's really that big of a deal in terms of causing cancer because uh, there are many injection molding plants uh, all around the world and including developed countries and even including the US which has a ridiculously expensive healthcare system which means uh, if there was a direct link with the ABS injection molding and uh, people getting sick their insurance rates would go uh, would skyrocket and we would know about that because we would no longer have injection molding plants that work with ABS in the US they would either offshore it to countries they don't care about or 
uh, use a different plastic or implement some sort of a weird technological ventilation system, which, based on what I've heard, it basically doesn't exist. It's just uh, the same thing. It's just open to the air. So, really, I don't think there is a big concern in terms of causing cancer. But at the same time, every time I go into that room, I get a headache if the 3D printer is running. So from that point of view, it is annoying and I want to get rid of that. So uh, that is what drove me to measuring the air quality in that room. And now that I've confirmed it, I want to try to do something about this. But that will be in a separate video, obviously. But uh, yeah, it's just where I, where I stand on that matter. Again, don't take my uh, word for fact. And if you're concerned, do your own research. But uh, as I said, I don't think it's a big issue, but I want to get rid of the headaches. So uh, yeah, let's take a look at my design here. So as I said, since the version I have printed, I added a ton of ventilation hex cutouts. This should still be printable. But uh, yeah, if you do have problems, Maybe I can work on it a bit more, but uh, yeah, this is the current design. If we look, uh, remove the covers, you can see the rear. So this is also has a mount for mounting it on a wall or something if you want to. And as I said, there is enough space in here for you to uh, mount a battery of some kind if you wish. And uh, yeah, and uh, I need to fix this. Th this is supposed to be a USB cutout. But uh, yeah, you can see the design here. It uses M2.5 screws to mount the uh, ESP8266 module there. And on the cover, this is the cover I used. Again, it, you, you can mount a 0.96 inch OLED display here. These holes are for M2.5 again, because that's the first module I worked with had those holes. but. I kind of ruined it during the prototyping stages of this and the second module I got had M2 screws which didn't fit so that's why you saw the hot glue but as far as I can tell most of them have M2.5 holes so I'm sticking with that but uh, yeah, if, if it's a different case I guess you can just hot glue it in place like I did or you can use uh, M2 threaded inserts in there I'm sure they will fit and uh, this is the mount for the module. This is for the DF robot module I used. I also designed a separate one for the CJMC well, Express ones that I haven't tested yet. But uh, yeah, I'm going to release this with the files. And uh, yeah, if you have problems, you can let me know. I don't think the worst or in on YouTube. Probably on YouTube would be better. And uh, yeah, that's the design here. It's a pretty simple design and. As for the assembly of this, I wrote a guide for it. The simplest way I can put it is you just do the wiring, install the libraries, copy and paste my code, and it should work. It's that simple. And I have the written guide on a pastebin link in the description below if you want to follow that. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video. So I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please give me a like down below. And thanks for watching.